Good morning. My name is Glendon Cameron and I have been renting cars for the last six months. And this is my story of what I have learned from renting cars for six months on Turo and Hire Car. I'm going to tell you the truth about renting cars. There's a lot of information online about renting cars and they're leaving some stuff out. <laughs> they're leaving a lot of stuff out. So let's talk about my Toro experience first. I had a Mercedes, Porsche, BMW, and for a beginning, it was doing pretty well. It was doing pretty well. Cars were consistently going out. And then literally, once the stimulus money left the economy, it just literally stopped. It literally stopped. And even though I did not have the issues, which we'll get into, because this video is going to be mostly about hire car. I didn't like Toro. And we'll tell you why I didn't like Toro. For Toro, there are many people on Toro, not all people, but many people on Toro are looking for cars that they can't afford. They're looking for, quote, unquote, an experienced car. And I had a limited budget and only, I paid cash for the majority of my cars. So I wasn't going to go out and buy a $50,000 car. Well, we'll talk about the car I didn't pay cash for. I have a 2014 Mercedes drop top and this car did really, really well on the platform. And this is one of the things that consistently happened. They would rent the car on Thursday and leave Sunday. So they would pick it up on Thursday, which was cool. Normally they pick up during normal time. And then they would drop the car off Sunday, which forced me in the beginning until I learned how to manage the rental car business to be working seven days a week because they like literally this one girl, she rented the car and she wanted to drop it off at 6.30 in the morning on Sunday. And I was just like, I'll be asleep. Just leave the key in the car and I'll check it out later. And that's what happened. And that consistently happened. I had like about 25 rentals that were like that Thursday to Sunday, Thursday to Sunday. And also I had this experience on Toro. Girl rented one of my BMWs and it's a 2011 335i. It's a sweet little car. And it has some issues with the speed sensors, which would trigger the brake and everything. But I took it to my mechanic and it had plenty of brake pad left. So it was a speed sensor and the speed sensor thing went off once and I had that fixed. And then when she had the rental, she rented it off. She it went off when she had the car and she reported it to Turo. And I'm like, the car stops just fine. See. This is one of the things that I just didn't like. Many Toro guests are picky. They're, 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 they could be a little bit to handle. I had a situation with the drop top where I had to have the headlight fixed. And I had a guy who was coming in to rent it and you know, it, it was taking longer than expected to get the car fixed. And I was like, I can switch you to the other Mercedes. And he, he lost his, he lost his mind. And I just canceled the rental and kept it moving. So for me, my experience with Toro wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. And I really didn't make a lot of money because I financed that Mercedes. It's a $50,000 car. And I'll tell you what happened with that in a minute. And I wasn't going to rent it out cheap because one of the metrics that I deploy is if I buy a car, how fast can I get that car paid off? And my barometer is to have a car that I can rent at a daily rate that will get that car paid off in a year. If I had rented that Mercedes out at a rate that would have consistently kept it out, because I understand, because I had it at 150 a day, if I had lowered it to 70 to 80, it would have stayed out consistently. But here's another thing. When you rent cars, they get damaged. And if I had rented that car for that cheaper rate, more than likely it would have been wrecked, tore up, or had some other issues. Because typically cheap rates draw careless people. And, you know, I just converted the car to a personal car. It's, um, you know, now I have three cars. 
I have a Porsche 911, a BMW X5M, and now this drop top. So I have three personal cars. I just, because that was kind of the plan. Because when I bought it, I liked it for myself. And if it didn't work out, I was just going to convert it to a personal car versus ha exposing it to damage. So that's it with Turo. Turo is... It is what it is. I'm not really a fan of Turo. I didn't like it. I didn't like the renters. I, I just didn't like it. So I actually took all of my cars off Turo because when the chick reported that the BMW had an issue, Turo delisted my car, even though the car was perfectly fine and perfectly safe and easily drive. So that was another reason that I did not like Turo. All right, let's talk about higher car. Higher car, I've had the most issues, but oddly enough, I actually like higher car, and I'm gonna tell you why I like higher car in a few minutes. First of all, let's talk about the issues. I've had eight cars stolen. What does that mean? This means that a renter rented my car, stopped paying, and refused to bring it back. When I first started renting cars, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I did not have GPS trackers. I did not have kill switches. I was just sending these cars out there. And I learned some very painful lessons, very expensive lessons early on. So typically what I have found out, because this was my plan. I bought four cars, a BMW, uh, a Porsche, and two Range Rovers for Toro, and then I bought three Acura TLs and a Corolla for hire car. And I, once again, in the beginning with Toro, I put those cars on Toro, they weren't going out. It was, it was very frustrating. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of these cars because I paid like 71,000 for those cars and I'm going to buy cheaper cars for Toro. So one Friday night, I put the Porsche, the BMW, the X5 and the, the Range Rovers on hire car. 12 hours later, those cars were gone. And I'm gonna tell you a positive story from that. I had a girl who rented the Black Land Rover. She rented that car for five months. I made $7,500 off that rental. The car only cost me 15,000. So that car is very much in alignment with what I'm trying to do from a metric standpoint. So. The Porsche got stolen. The Porsche was my first stolen car. Guy rented the car, then he stopped paying. And I'm like, where's my car? What's going on? And then I hear, this is the story that I was told. And I have a playlist, the, 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 switch, the, switch, the switch Kill Chronicles, the Kill Switch Chronicles, the Kill Switch Chronicles that have all these stories. I'll link it below the video. And uh, he told me he let someone drive it. And this is another issue I'll talk about. And she got carjacked and they took her phone and everything. And I believed it was a story. I believe it was a story from Jump. So I'm going back and forth. He cannot give me information. He gives me a police report that doesn't work. He gives me all kinds of garbage. So we finally get to the point where I put out a stolen car report on him. And my car is found two days later because the car had low jack on it. And what I found out is two days after he rented the Porsche from me, they sold it on Craigslist. I am not making this up. They sold it. And I got the car back and then I actually, you know, I got really, really emotional and disgusted. So I just got rid of the car. And in hindsight, I should have kept that car in hindsight. But once again, um, I've learned my lesson. So, and then I've had a Range Rover that got stolen. Then I had uh, several BMWs that have gotten stolen. And essentially what they will do is they will get access, get the keys to the car, keep it and not pay it. Right now, I have a situation going on with a BMW 740i. They have my car. They don't want to bring it back. So today I'm filing another police report. And this car has a GPS kill switch on it. The GPS kill switch failed. That's something else. So this is a lot of drama. Uh, what I found out with hire cars, people will take your car, keep your car, not pay you, 
but they will be driving the car. This is one of the things I've had three kill switch failures and I can see that they're driving the car, even though they're not paying you. And this is a, this is problematic on several fronts. First of all, they're depreciating your car. They're depreciating the oil. They're, they're putting miles on the tire. They're using your car. Now, fortunately, from a tax standpoint, I can take these losses off as a net loss on my taxes. And this is going to go contribute greatly to me getting like a six figure tax return next year. So that's the only hindsight. But here's the thing. If you're going to rent on hire car, I urge you before you put your car on hire car for you to have a GPS kill switch. Now, the GPS lets you know where the car is but the kill switch turns the car off. And I'll guarantee you, and this is how it was going in the beginning with the, when I first got the GPS, because like I said, I started this and I didn't have the GPS kill switches, I didn't have all that. And um, I will tell you, it was really hard to find people to install them. And I was, people were telling me two, three, four weeks, and I was just like, that's too long, so I just sent the cars out. Now, now I have 25 cars with GPS kill switches. And for the most part, they work except for the three failures. And when you, cause this was my plan. Like I would turn the car off and I would get a call. It's like, hey, the car won't work. Oh my goodness, just leave the key in there and I will have a tow truck come get it. And that worked like a charm, that worked great. Cause I did not want them to know that I had the ability to turn the car off because that could give them information where they could try to defeat my countermeasures. So I didn't want them to know. And that worked really fine. Then this has started to happen. I had people start to figure out that I had turned the car off because they knew they weren't paying. And once again, I got a car I got to probably pick up next week. I turned it off. And one of the things is you don't want them driving your car when they're not paying you because they will mess it up. They will mess it up. They will mess your car up. So I got a car I'll probably pick up next week. I turned it off and the guy, because here's some of the things like, one of the things with renting a car on hire cars is you're dealing with an economically fragile demographic. These people don't have the money to buy a car and this is why they're renting a car. You have some people who have a car and they choose to rent a car because they don't want to put their miles on their car. But the majority of the people on hire car cannot buy a car because they're in an economically fragile situation. So you're dealing with an, a bad demographic to begin with. And this is why you need the GPS kill switches. Like many people's like trackers. Okay. Trackers could be good. This could be a system where you could track your car and you have an extra key. You can go get it. That could be good. But preferably you want the GPS kill switch because when the car doesn't work, they don't want it anymore and you want to get the car back as soon as possible because the longer they have your car and not paying you, the greater the chance of damage. I had a BMW X5 come back trashed, literally trashed, because there is a correlation between non-payment of rent and bad people trashing your, your property. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's astounding how these people will mess up your cars and not pay you. Depreciate your car, not pay you, prevent you from renting the car to someone else, and they, they will not care, they will not care one bit. So if you're going to rent on hire car, and I'm gonna give you the demographics as I know them, I would say 70% of the rentals on hire car are good. They will rent your car, they will drive it and they'll bring it back in the condition that they rented it out in about 70 percent 30 percent these are the danger zone let me go ahead and give you some of my experiences when people are habitually late and this is something that i've tested i would stay on them like hey are you going to bring the car back or are you going to extend and they would extend and they would extend there's a group of people that you literally have to put your foot on their neck to get them to pay and if you don't say anything to them, two days will turn to three days, three days will turn to six days, six before you know it. Because once again, these people have bad financial habits. They're not paying their power bill. They're not paying their cell bill. They have the habit of not paying bills, even if they have the money. 
So what you want to do is this is my current policy. Um, I turn the car off at 12 to 24 hours, even if it's been a long term renter, because I've had mo multiple long term renters who were paying just fine and they turned into yard birds. They just stopped paying and I will turn the car off and I will go get it or, you know, I've had and out of all the cars I've turned off, I've had two people pay up two, just two. Because typically these people have bad money management habits. So if you're going to rent a hire car, it is mandatory that you have a GPS kill switch, not just a tracker, but a GPS kill switch, GPS kill switch. And also what you want to have is a set of rules, which I'm getting to, I'm going to print them up and put them in each car starting November 1st. You're going to like one of the things you have to worry about is tires. These people will run over stuff and they will call you at 8 30, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, say, hey, I got a flat. And I'm like, fix it. Because 99.9% .9 of the time, if the tire is flat, it's because they ran over something. But they want you to pay for it, even though they ran over it. So this is a big, big issue because I have uh, about 15 BMWs with low profiles and they're consistently running over stuff. Uh, I, I have a poor Cheyenne, Cayenne S a guy ran over something and we had an argument in text and he said it was a bad tire. I knew for a fact it wasn't a bad tire. I bought the tire two months prior. It was a brand new tire. And when we got the tire back, there was a hole in the front of the tire where he ran over something. He had to know that he ran over something. So, there's a big issue with tires where people will run over stuff, do stuff and not want to pay for it. And they will come after you for their messing up. That's one issue. That's something like now, if you have a few cars, you will not like I've got 31 cars. So I my problems are going to be greater than the average person. And but I'm just kind of giving you a snapshot of what can happen. Tires also. If you're going to rent a hire car, you're going to need two keys, especially if you got the GPS kill switch thing, because if they figure out that you turned off the car, they will get vindictive, even though they're not paying you. And they will keep the key. And these keys are expensive, 250 to 750 dollars for a replacement key. The replacement key for my Porsche is $516 and $180 to program. That's just for one key. So you want to have two keys. Right now I have a situation that, with a car that only has one key, has the GPS kill switch, the GPS kill switch failed, and now they're playing, because the thing is, I turned the car off and they paid up. Then I turn, you know, then they got late again, and now I can't find them. And this is why I have to file a police report today. But you know, I thought I would tell you all the bad stuff that can happen with hire car. Now let's get to the good stuff. When you get a good renter, like my cars rent out from 40 bucks a day up to 85 bucks a day. And if you get a good renter at 40 bucks a day, that's 1100 bucks. Let's see, 40. Yeah, that's twelve hundred. That's eleven hundred dollars a month for you. And I have several cars that are making me eleven hundred. I got a few cars I'm renting for seventy that are making me seventeen hundred dollars per month consistent income from hire car. And this is one of the things I'm getting ready to do. Uh, I'm not buying any more cars this year because right now I'm working on utilization. What is utilization? Utilization is getting your car consistently out because I have 31 cars, but at any time I can have 12 cars unrented. Right now I have three cars in the shop. I have three car, two cars that are wrecked, three cars that are wrecked. So that's six cars out of the 31 that I cannot rent. And currently I have three cars unrented. So out of the 31 cars, I have 22 currently rented right now. My goal is to get to 
90%, 100% utilization. Now, one of the issues with the cars that are wrecked, it takes months to resolve this. Now, here's a little tip for you. If you're running a business and someone hits your car, you can go to their insurance company and file a loss of revenue claim because this car is an asset in your business and because they're sitting around like it's gonna take six weeks to three months to resolve your claim. And that's the car is gonna be sitting and I'm getting ready to file like, um, hopefully, I will give you some insights on this. Hopefully you get hit by USA. USA from hands down is the easiest company to deal with for claims. I have a, someone hit my Mercedes and it should be fixed today and USA is going to fix it. They're going to cover the cost of fixing it. And I'm going to get a check for the loss of revenue. Best company ever. So one of the things, if you're running a rental car business and someone hits you, you need to knock the insurance company across the head for a loss of revenue claim because while your car is down, you cannot make money. And it happened because their insured hit your car. So this is a valid claim. And once again, I got another one I'm going to work on today. But I like hire car because you can take an asset like the Range Rover. I only paid 15000 for it and it's already made 8000 because they rented out again. So this car will be paid off for in a year. And then this is the good thing. Next year, and this is my plan, next year I'm dropping the price on all of the cars that have paid for themselves. Now, why would I do that? Utilization, because they're paid for. I can rent them out for 25 bucks a day and it's 100% profit. So this is one of the reasons that you wanna get your cars paid for as soon as possible. I know many people are financing cars and I feel that's a slippery slope. Uh, once again, I only financed one car because it was so expensive and I only had a limited budget. So I didn't want to like blow $50,000 on one car and then it didn't work out. And there's another thing. I got some cars that I'm getting ready to sell and I'm gonna sell them on the private market because I bought these cars when the market was super high and trying to sell them to a dealer or trade in, I'm gonna take a loss. So they're gonna have to be <clears throat> private sales. But this is just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, of things that I've learned. And I will be talking and doing more videos about this because I'm gonna get to that 100% utilization because with 100% utilization, I can make $30,000 a month off 25 cars. And they have to be the right cars. And th this is something else that I've learned too. And this, is, this has happened frequently, frequently. I have Acuras, which were in pristine condition. All of my Acuras have now have damage. If you rent out cars, you have to get cars that you're not emotionally connected to because they will get damaged. The only rental car that I have with no damage is the Mercedes. And one of the reasons that it doesn't have damage is I never allowed it to go out cheaply. If you have cheap cars, they will be damaged. They're gonna get scrapes, scratches, nicks, chips. They're gonna be damaged. So virtually all of my rental cars have some damage. And once again, I bought them to rent out. I look at them as soldiers. They go out to war and they bring me back dollars. And that's one thing. So uh, November and December, I'm gonna be working on getting to 100% utilization. And then this January, I'm gonna start buying cars. Also, a word of advice if you're gonna rent a hire car. Many people are telling you that you can go out and get cheap, super cheap cars. And you can get super cheap cars and you can rent them out. But super cheap cars is going to bring you a lot of bad renters. Let me say this again. This has been my experience. When I rented out the Acura TLs for 40 bucks, I got bad renter after bad renter after bad renter. I believe that there is a hidden market in hire car at the $70 per day mark. I have a Uber Lyft driver renting the Porsche Cyan for 75 bucks a day, which for him is like a hundred bucks a day. And this is something that I've heard that 
repeatedly have heard it from several Uber drivers. I've heard it from several Lyft drivers that I had someone who was in the BMW and the BMW had mechanical issues. So I had to switch them to the Acura, right? And from my opinion, the Acura is a very good car. I, it's a well-built product, right? And this is what I heard from the Uber and Lyft driver. Hey, when can I get the BMW back? Because my money has gone down since I've been in this Acura. I've heard that several, several, several times. So I know that there is a market for premium cars. And when I start buying cars again in January, I am not buying any cheap cars. I'm going to buy BMWs. I'm going to buy Porsches. I'm going to buy Range Rovers. That's what I'm going to buy because these cars consistently go out. And also, this is where you got to have the GPS kill switch because these are the cars that people will want to keep <clears throat> and not pay you because they're like, because I, I feel on some level that these people think that the cars are theirs because uh, I've like, you know, I have all my cars with a little key tag with the car, the make and the number and all this stuff on it. And routinely I get the back without that little tag on it because they've put that car key on their personal keys because they, they feel that it's their car and it, they treat it. And some I've had some people who wash the cars. I had one girl, she rented the car for three months. She washed it. She brought it back with a full tank of gas. It was rental ready. You know, I will rent to her anytime she needs it. But once again, for me, I feel that higher car <clears throat> is better than Toro because of the long-term rental aspect. Because you with Toro, you have a lot of turn. Like I said, Toro, the Mercedes was going in, it was coming back, it was going in, it's coming back. So for the record, even though I've had multiple problems with higher car, multiple problems with higher car, I like higher car better than Turo because from a dollars to cents standpoint, um, you can make more money. And with my plan that I'm going to launch in 2022, I'm going to pretty much just get cars that I can rent for 70 bucks a day. I'm not buying any more 30, 40. I'm not buying any more of those cars. So if I can't rent it out for 75 bucks a day, I'm not going to buy it because I've worked up some metrics. I can actually get to six figures in rentals with, I believe, 60, 70 cars. I think I can get there. And that's per month. But once again, these are going to be high end cars. They're going to be nice cars. I'm not buying any more older cars. And once these cars I currently have, I'm going to call this. Um, the first wave. These cars are the first wave. And the second wave begins in 2022. And the second wave is going to be nicer cars. They're going to be more expensive cars. And they're going to be more high end. Because I see that there is that hidden spot in the market for those premium cars that a lot of people don't want to mess with. Because I've talked to a lot of people and a lot of owners on higher car or amateurs. They are not businesses. They're not set up like a business. They don't run it like a business. So there's plenty of opportunity if you want to come into hire car as a professional with a professional setup where I believe you can make a ton of money, a ton of money. So that's all I got for you guys. And if you don't want to rent cars, I got a video after this video where you can get into Hustlers University and I can teach you how to make $1,500 to $5,000 within the next 90 days. So check that out and I'll see you guys in the next one. This video, Cool Cats and Cool Girls, is sponsored by Hustlers University, where we teach you how to hustle. We teach you how to start your first side business, where we teach you how to start a business that will make you $1,500 to $5,000 on top of your job in the next three to five months. So this is what I got for you. You will go here to H undergrad. All links are below and you can do a thousand dollars to get in one time payment, or you can do 30 payments of $50, or you can do 15 payments of $99. Because what this curriculum will do is teach you how to hustle. It will teach you how to do resale. It will teach you so many things because 
what is cool about this is it's just not a course. It is, we, we provide you with a pathway. And what is that? And the first comment is the schematic of the things that you have to do. And right now, there's literally five months of training and instruction in Hustlers University to get you started. So once you start diving in, you're going to be working for the next five months and you're going to do some of the courses concurrently and you're going to build your first side business. So go ahead, act on this opportunity. The price isn't going to change so you can get in, get your money together so you can start to level up. Once again, the link is below in the first comment and hopefully you will be part of the Hustlers Kung Fu family. Also, coming soon, everyone that signs up for Hustlers Kung Fu and essentially what we have here is B-School for Hustlers is the grad school. This is like getting your MBA. This is like the MBA, the corporate papers. And if you go ahead and sign up for Hustlers Kung Fu and you want the corporate papers, whatever you pay for Hustlers Kung Fu University, we will take that off so and give you a discount code so you can get into the corporate papers when you're ready. I know many of you don't really care how you make money, and I understand that now. So I'm going to teach you how to do resale. I'm going to teach you how to do Craigslist. I'm going to teach you how to do service businesses and all of this stuff. Once again, that first link under the video is where you can access all of this juicy training. So let's go ahead and get into this video.